you are manufacturing both LFP, which is ferrophosphate, which everybody knows, and something I heard of for the first time today is LTO, that is lithium titanium yeah. batteries. How is LTO unique and what, what makes Logline sure. unique over there? So, I think, uh, so these are two different chemistries yeah. we are working on LFP, lithium iron phosphate, and LTO lithium titanium. Uh, lithium titanate, basically, the advantage is on the anode, you have a layer of titanium there. LTO chemistry is actually on the anode side. What that helps is whenever there is fast charging happening, you are just imagine in a very simplified version that on the anode, which is usually graphite, you have now a lithium titanate layer which is like a pillow. Mm -hmm. So the ions will move very fast, mm -hmm. but then the pillow will absorb it. Okay. So it has a spiral structure and it gives more surface area for ions to keep on passing through without causing thermal runaway or explosion of the cell. Your surface area at the anode side has increased because of which you can fast charge and that's the advantage of LTO which we have brought to India from a technology perspective. We are the biggest LTO uh, based battery player in India today. Uh, we have introduced in the last mile sector two wheelers and three wheelers which fast charge in the commercial sector which was our prime focus because we feel that forms the backbone of electrification in India. What are the challenges you face and what are the challenges that the EV industry faces in India right now according to you? Um, I think overall more coordination between players is important. Mm -hmm. You can't grow one technology in silo. Mm -hmm. uh, the whole technology and whole supply chain needs to grow together. Even us being at the as a battery player or as a cell player, we want our backward supply chain to also grow, which is lithium metal. Mm -hmm. Where is the material coming from? Till today, EV people used to ask, where is the battery coming from? Mm -hmm. Which is the first question. It is coming from China. Yeah. Now that battery pack coming from China has its own limitations of visibility of the quality mm -hmm. of the battery that you get. We indigenize that as a battery. The next question people ask is where is this cell coming from? Now we have taken the step towards indigenization of the cell. The next question people will ask is where is the lithium coming from? Where is the lithium coming from? Yeah. So currently I think uh, lithium is a global, uh, is a mineral currently available outside India. Yeah. Indian ministry has been pretty proactive in locking mines globally for lithium mm -hmm. in Latin America, uh, Latin Africa etc. Um, but the Jammu Kashmir uh, news that came out is a G3 reserve which is very promising for India because now at least the complete supply chain can be Indian. It can be actually a 100% indigenous where the material is also Indian. In a vehicle, ideally what are the two things in my opinion which will still stay imported can be lithium and can be the magnets in the motor mm -hmm. which are rare earth metals. But that Chara is trying that to is where, that yeah. is a so Chara is another startup that you have supported, I yes. guess. Yes. So they are doing uh, just to give a context to viewers, they are doing uh, uh, using steel magnets and iron magnets, which don't use rare earth materials. So and is this the work you guys have been doing for the last uh, year, pretty much? Uh, last year was actually interacting globally. So last one year, previous day zero, if you would have, if you see that we actually had that space which we currently our line is there was empty. Mm -hmm. We stabilized the chemistry on a 1 megawatt hour small line. Mm -hmm. Once that chemistry was stabilized, we had to grow that into a bigger line which is the 50 megawatt, which is like 50 times the capacity from there. That was an R&D line. So last one year primarily went into setting up this complete line process scale up, which mm -hmm. we call. Secondly, identifying this complete supply chain. Where is material coming from? From whom will we source active materials, binders, separators, electrolyte, who will supply all of this? So we found a lot of global players. But also to our pleasant surprise, we found a lot that for at least every component that goes into a lithium ion cell, you had at least one Indian player, which was very promising that, you know, as demand, which is already increasing in the EV space, a player like log keeps on increasing their cell manufacturing line in the back end, the complete value chain will keep on increasing. The cell is made in India, but, of course, uh, but even the lithium is coming from Indian miners who may be abroad, but the huge value add is in India. Correct, because if you see, we, we lost the bus on a lot of uh, places as India. Mm -hmm. Solar, we could not indigenize that scale, still dependent on China. Mm -hmm. Telecom, we lost the bus. Mm -hmm. I think EV is the only next option that we have for the next 50 years, which can be a big thing for India. Not only EV, but energy storage overall. And energy storage, of course, is the next big thing. And of course, I saw your power bank, I saw... But that would be to use a different chemistry. I'm hearing a lot about sodium and aluminium as well. Um, see, sodium, in my opinion, is an alternate material to lithium because it forms under the same uh, column in the periodic yeah. table. 
it still needs to stabilize, will take some time. It will have its own application area. I mean, it's storage, that's what I'm saying, because weight is not a I think more than so, its mobility, it would have a good impact because the range is very high, the energy density is high in sodium. But it's still far away. How it will, five years, six years at least, and how it will happen in India at least, and how it will happen is, all your current lithium ion manufacturing line, mm -hmm. sodium will just get, get adapted to that line as a different material. Okay, so I think because sodium is much more readily available, sorry. so it will be cheaper as well, right? And it's easy, I mean, you're not dependent on lith limited lithium sources. Correct, as of yet. Uh, we never know how much more lithium is going to get explored in the next five years. Yeah, just like oil, we thought oil would peak at the same time. <laughs> correct, correct. So you always find Still, people say we've only touched 10% of the overall oil available on the earth. Yeah. 90% is reserves not explored. So, I mean, too expensive to get out just like that. So, so similar thing with lithium, you think, will happen for sure. Can happen, for sure. I think there will be more reserves coming out. And do you believe in multiple lithium chemistries? With, so you have, of course, uh, an, you know, lithium manganese cobalt, you have ferrophosphate, which is the new yeah. thing for cars, and, and you have LTO. Do you think other chemistries will also emerge in the coming years? Yeah, so lithium sulfur is a good promising chemistry out there. Mm -hmm. uh, NMC was there, what will happen is cobalt will come down for sure in batteries. Because cobalt is very uh, concentrated in certain geographies. Congo, I know. Yeah. And it's also very, it's a dirty metal to find. Uh, right, it's, it's, it's socially not good mining cobalt. So yeah. cobalt will go down for sure. Uh, manganese richness will start happening in batteries. Manganese is more abundant available. So even in LFP, the challenge of energy density will be challenged, will be tackled through manganese addition. But nickels become very expensive. Also. Nickels become expensive. Nickel uh, will also, I think, in my opinion, come down. LFP will be a prime choice for mass markets. So for cars, for um, because is LFP also easier to make? LFP is easier to make, but very difficult to recycle. One of the just negatives of LFP as of yet is there are two negatives of LFP as of yet. Mm -hmm. One is energy density is less mm -hmm. compared to NMC. Okay. NMC is at least 200 to 50 watt per kg, okay. 200 to 220 today. LFP is 130 to 150. Also, the discharge rate on NMC is higher. So for Which I think is soluble in LFP. Okay. People are, so, LFP also comes as a power cell. You mm -hmm. can do faster charge discharge, which I so showed in my presentation okay. as well. The only uh, two disadvantage one was that actually energy density is less, which will be tackled by manganese sort of rich mm -hmm. chemistries in LFP itself. The second would be recyclability is a challenge in LFP. LFP is a very stable compound, you can't break it easily. Yeah, so I'll tell you one year back, one and a half years back, we used to shout in the market that a chemistry like LTO and LFP will only work in the tropical belt, NMC won't work. Mm -hmm. NMC is very unsafe, has cobalt dependency, will work in some country like Europe or US where temperatures are low. Mm -hmm. At that time, LFP was still to come. Mm -hmm. Now everyone is talking about LFP. Yeah, LFP also, at the beginning, if I recall correctly, had the Battery memory issues, which were all solved. Battery right? memory was solved, yeah. Memory was an issue because of which the range was uh, yeah. going down every time you used to use it. So, this is a fa fast developing thing. Now, one challenge as an Indian company must face is the Chinese also developing a lot of IP over here. The likes of CATL and BYD are developing a lot of IP. So, how can you, I mean, what you spoke about your rise towards the end and as well as your team of very talented young, uh, you know, young engineers. How do you plan to resolve that? How do you plan to get them? How do you plan to develop your own IP, whether it's log nine or even competitors like? Yeah. So fundamentally, if you see log nine's genesis has been material science. We started out of Roorkee in 2016 as a material science company, nanotechnology company to be specific. We've been already nurturing a lot of talent in that journey. I think today we're a hundred plus engineers in this team. Primarily material scientists and battery engineers, electronics, etc. Uh, our focus has always been engineering first products. Mm -hmm. You, if you see the agility with which we have developed technologies in the last three years and technologies which are actually globally benchmarked. If you see, we started our journey with supercapacitor three years back. Mm -hmm. Three years, three and a half years back, we were building supercaps. That was our stepping stone into lithium because we learned how to build a cell. But the supercap that we built was global standard. We got it certified as per standards of US and Europe. Mm -hmm. So, we have always made sure that, you know, crunching R&D timelines, learning as much as possible globally, there is no competition, it's a very, the complete ecosystem is doing it for sustainability, it's a common target. Mm -hmm. So, we learn a lot with each other globally, a lot of papers openly published, we learn from them. Talent definitely is a challenge. Today, there is only limited talent in India in this sector and everyone is taking from each other. 
so that rise if you see log nine rise is an initiative during the towards that direction we're looking at opening common centers where people can come and do research on battery tech because definitely as you said technologies are evolving in the energy industry specifically batteries and will continue evolving not for the next 5 years or the next 20 years so when you say if, you, if a young engineer today is getting into an iit or any good engineering college they should study electrochem electrochemical engineering definitely i think the only one thing that is required and uh, for iits or nits is to overhaul their curriculum Yes, right. You are trying to do an integrated board, right? Like system on a chip, I guess. Uh, it will come down to that. Do you think uh, instead of having multiple boards, you can have a single board? That's the idea. So that's the idea of um, so basically commonizing when I see at least mm -hmm. the CPU part of it. Mm -hmm. So for example, in your computer or your desktop or your laptop, also you have multiple functions you do. Yeah. But you have one single IC, right? Yeah. So you put one single IC for multiple things, but then you have all auxiliaries attached to it, sensors, yeah. different sensors for different applications. For sensing current, sensing voltage. If you're talking about, let's suppose uh, uh, the charging unit, the charging controller, the charging controller algorithm can also be inside that. The MOSFETs along with that one single board. Right now, we have been able to crunch telematics logic, charging controller logic, and battery management system logic into one board. The next step of future for us is to get the VCU in it, right. vehicle okay. control unit. Today, majority of EVOEM buy a VCU separately. Buy a EVCC separately, buy a battery with a BMS separately, buy a telematics separately. There's too much complexity. To be honest, that's too much of semiconductor or silicon for the same task. And it's uh, too much complexity, and of course, therefore imports. And DFME, so the fault fault analysis is very high, right? Anything can go off. Mm. Commonize it, bring one single platform, becomes the brain of the complete vehicle. All right, Karthik, I want to get to another issue. Um, last summer, we had a lot of thermal runaway incidents. As an engineer, I would like to ask you, I mean, I'm not an engineer, I mean, I'm just an automotive journalist, but I, so I'd like to understand why this happened. Like, what should people watch out for? It's already 40 degrees plus in Delhi, yeah. so it's, it's hard. And you would have started seeing that incidents again starting happening because in certain it's hard. in the it's, last one week, yeah. two weeks. Yeah. What happens usually is the choice of chemistry point one for this particular zone. No one thinks about the 45-50 degrees that the country goes to and that 50 degrees ideally ambient for you and me. Think yeah. about at the underhood of the vehicle where the battery is. Then 70-80-90. At least. At that temperature, thermal runway for certain chemistries like an NMC chemistry, it's very difficult to manage. That's why you saw a lot of two-wheelers coming under because that. Because of NMC. Because of NMC. NMC has a lower thermal runway. Hmm. Uh, Secondly, I think no one was designing or developing batteries with a engineer first approach. It was more of a supply chain first approach. Cells were coming from China. There was no visibility on what cell is coming. It was always just a, when it is a supply chain driven product rather than an engineering driven product, it's always or driven by pricing. It's never driven by safety. It's never driven by performance. It's driven by pricing. I'm getting this battery for $60. Correct. I'll take that. And what is happening is for China, US, Europe are good markets in terms of pricing. Mm -hmm. So they most of their grade A cells were going to so US and Europe. US and Europe will be paying $100 for the... India gets the grade B cheaper cells. Those grade B cheaper cells have defects which because of which this possibility becomes high of explosion. Any defect inside a cell, the temperature can rise very fast because of internal resistance being high and the thermal runway can happen fast. And how does BMS solve all this? So BMS, ideally more than BMS, it starts right at the design stack itself, which if you see the, so one thing, one good thing government did last year was the revision of the AIS. Yeah, 197, right? uh, 156. 156. AIS 156 phase 2. Phase 2. Okay. Wherein they said thermal propagation should not happen. So it was yeah, a one cell to another cell. Correct. Even if one cell catches uh, any thermal runway, so what they did was the test is to bring one cell to thermal runway and to see if it doesn't propagate. What that pushed companies, even if they are adopting NMC, they are still two wheeler manufacturer using NMC because of the high energy density. They started putting materials between cells to prevent thermal propagation. So now even if there is a short circuit, between the cells. Correct. It's a potting material. Different type of materials you can put to prevent flammability to transfer from one cell to the other. And how does LTO and LFP resolve? Yeah, so LTO <coughs> point one LTO thermal runway is beyond what we can even see on the roads. LTO is a very stable technology. So 200 plus? Even more than that. Okay. So, uh, in fact, in our test, one of the challenges was thermal runway was not even coming in the thermal propagation test. Okay. So, we could not even trigger it. Okay. 
so that's the safety of LTO as a chemistry and that's something that that's why it's a it's a Japanese driven chemistry Toshiba is one of the biggest players in LTO mm -hmm. so it's one of the safest chemistry ever mm -hmm. then LFP is second to that in terms of safety LFP also thermal runway temperatures are high uh, it's a much better chemistry in terms of safety compared to LMC and, and should manufacturers of EVs consider that we live in India where it's you know it's hot it's hot for five six months of the year not only India tropical climate if you see Indian automotive sector has always been not only getting to India but the complete tropical belt so Africa Africa Middle East it's primarily a lot of Ashok Leyland Mandra very strong there Latin America you will you'll find Bajaj autos in Latin America mm -hmm. so the complete tropical belt has been served by India which is like I think one of the top five automotive manufacturing geographies in the world you are catering to a tropical blend, which is high temperature. You have to make products for that particular segment. In ICE engine, I think at least to extend it to a standardized table as a technology, EV it needs thought, it needs engineering, it needs R&D behind it. That's where log lines focus in on the tropical belt and that's why the choice of chemistry being LTO and LFP. And when it comes to LFP, again the right thermal management for the right application. It will never be a one technology fits all sort of thesis. It will always be application specific. So, the same cell, of course, will not work in energy storage as it will with a two-wheeler. A cell might work in a two-wheeler and energy storage, but the stack beyond that cell also has to change. The software, software the thermal management beyond it, the charging algorithms, the BMS management system in itself, the algos there will change. Mm -hmm. So, it will depend. So, cell also there are chances. For example, if you are looking at a 20-year sort of life on a solar with a battery, LTO works well. Mm -hmm. LTO can match the solar life or mm -hmm. 20 years. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but if you are looking at, let's suppose a two-wheeler whose life is three years, LFP would be a better choice because cost makes sense. And do these, would these cells have a second life? I mean, as energy storage data now? Yeah. I mean, a, 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 a EV application and then a... LTO storage. can at least have two more lives of EV after one life. So, LTO has 20 years of life, assuming a seven years life on one application, you can at least have two more so lives. So, that three-wheeler downstairs can... The battery can rotate. So to it can we go to the next our next EV again because after the because the state of charge declines that is very low so it's a 10,000 life cycle product oh wow so, so, so the, 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 the mechanical components of the three wheeler will break before the yeah that's that's the idea with LTO uh, LFP ideally you can match the vehicle life till 80% so 80% SOH is the first cutoff of an LFP that you know this is where you stop in automotive sector Currently, state of health. State of health. State of health. Currently, globally, the exploration is happening that we can take it to 70% SOH for stationary application. Okay. People are saying you can even push it to 65% SOH. State okay. of health. But still under because what happens is after 80%, every chemistry becomes unpredictable. It can decline sharply. Yeah. So it might be going like this to 80%. After that, you don't know when the jerk will come. This is also because these are new, right? So as in when you get no one has more, seen that more years because. It, with cars, you are told a guarantee is only for 8 years. Yeah. But as some of the oldest TVs are now past 8 years, we are seeing that it's okay, not too bad. Tesla is saying that it's not too bad. Tesla, I think, but switch to LFP also is starting to switch to LFP. Yes. Primarily because of more iron availability, but also because of safety. And safety has, yeah, yeah, NMC has a challenge. NMC has a challenge. NMC has a challenge. Tesla was always an NMC user. But NMC is also people say that NMC was also worked for performance vehicles because of the discharge. energy density energy density energy density and charge discharge C rates uh, but LFP is also advancing very aggressively LFP there is 6C or 6C charge discharge LFP also available energy density if you see the likes of Gaussian the likes of uh, BYD BYD has been an LFP yes. there since mm -hmm. ages uh, cattle mm -hmm. people are pushing LFP to the Chinese are pushing LFP to a higher energy densities. That was the only reason why NMC. NMC was more crowded in the two-wheeler segment because lesser space, more energy. So uh, just give us an idea downstairs, how much, how many uh, megawatt hours of batteries can you manufacture? It's a 50 megawatt hour uh, cell line annually which can do 25,000 equivalent two-wheeler EVs. Okay, and what do you plan to expand to? Uh, gigawatt. Gigawatt. Yeah, the next target would be a gigawatt hour. And so the idea is to go to a giga line. This line also will not be using completely for commercial manufacturing. Mm -hmm. We will also use it to further advance chemistries. The, so, so your research, this is still your R&D centers. We'll still continue using it as an R&D, but, but still it is a commercial line because we'll put vehicles out there with these cells. Yeah, I know. That's what that would be with OSMs. They will be using your yeah. cells.
So you, you plan to set up a bigger factory outside now because this is still a Yeah, <laughs> so we already have a battery pack plant which is near to the airport. Okay. That's a R250 megawatt a battery pack plant. Okay. The cell plant after this would be definitely outside our HQ r &D. Okay. And you want to move to a giga. We just raised series B funding, so yeah. you'll have to raise more funding for that, you think? That's always happening. So I think the amount of, but the only good thing with a company like Log9 is that uh, putting up this line, mm. so ideally there are two ends of a tunnel, right? At the end of the tunnel, demand has already been set. It's there. <clears throat> you don't have a demand problem. There's no demand problem. EVs are at scale. There's already gigawatt are more than, I think, more than five gigawatt are sort of need currently itself. Mm -hmm. Need the I report by 2030, 600 gigawatt hours of energy storage needed okay. because renewable also needs yeah, batteries. Uh, right. So that market will be there's demand at the end of the tunnel. Putting up this 50 megawatt hour line shows that yes, the starting of the tunnel is ready. All you need is capital to build the tunnel. So I think that capital is because previously what used to happen, we only saw one side of it. Someone might have a battery seven years or eight years back. If someone would have had a cell, he would have had supply, but where was the demand? If someone, if someone like Log9 didn't have the technology, homegrown, built internally, we would have the demand, but where is the supply? And Amala Raja, of course, is not a big investor of yours. Would you be patent, you know, licensing your So, we or? already are a partner with Amala Raja and what they are looking at, so they are, they are investing 9,000 crores into a lithium yeah, yeah, cell. 15, 15 gigawatt. Correct. So, that uh, actually Log9 is a partner in that. Okay, so, so that will have your tech maybe right. so we work produced at that scale. So, scaling up the complete technology. Because ideally just manufacturing at scale is not the answer for this market. You need to continuously innovate on whatever is happening globally. Yeah, I mean that, that's what happened. Every generation of cell is a is different. Great. Yeah. Is, is an upgrade, right? Correct. So that for that's why company like Long Line makes a lot of sense for a company like Amar Raja because that continuous innovation is our DNA. Their DNA is manufacturing at scale. And we want to touch the end consumer with the complete solution altogether. Thank you so much, Karthik. It was a pleasure meeting you. Thanks, Thanks a lot. Thank, Thank you. you.